Hi everyone, welcome to our uh, fourth session of the day. I hope you all had a chance to go and grab a cup of coffee. Uh, this next session uh, is a conversation with Venture Minerals. Uh, unfortunately, they couldn't join me today because they're too busy down at the mine site in Tasmania. Um, but I managed to speak with Andrew earlier this week and uh, we've got a recording for you uh, today. To ITA's 10th Investing in Tin seminar. I'm joined today by Andrew Radonjic from Venture Minerals. Uh, good to have you, Andrew. Uh, likewise, it's good to be, uh, well, virtually here, but uh, <laughs> in London, but unfortunately not possible today. Yeah, unfortunately. Uh, so Andrew is a geologist and mineral economist with over 30 years of experience in mining and exploration. Uh, Andrew has fulfilled a range of senior roles which gave rise to three gold discoveries, totaling more than 3 million ounces in resources and resulting in 1.5 million ounces of gold being produced. Uh, since 2006, Andrew has been an executive director at Venture Minerals, during which time the Mount Lindsay tin tungsten deposit was discovered. Uh, he's also non-executive chairman of Codrus Minerals. So Andrew, Mount Lindsay, um, for those who don't know about the deposit, tell us more. Yes, yeah, so it's you know, Mount Lindsay is um, you know it's in on the west coast of Tasmania. We're we're in a uh, I suppose Australia's premier tin district. Uh, we've got our very very famous Renison Bell tin mine just down the road from us, and there's the uh, mine out Cleveland uh, tin mine to the north. And uh, there's a fair bit of history. And and this is, this Mount Lindsay deposit, as it is known, um, was discovered in 1909, typically by Panny Consider up the creek. And uh, so had a little bit of history of, of mining around those sort of early 1900s. And, and then eventually, uh, you know, we ran to the phase of drilling in the 1970s and, and early 80s with, with initially uh, Abbott Foil and then, and then Renison itself uh, joined Venture into the, into the project. So by the time Venture came across in 2007, it was already like 17,000 metres of diamond core drilling. So, so we're very fortunate to, uh, to leverage off that. But, um, you know, as the as the years went on from 07 through to completion of the feasibility study in 2012, uh, you know we drilled uh, another 83 kilometres of, of drilling and making it in all up some of over 100,000 metres. And uh, so we've delineated two mineralised scans, which are only 150 metres apart. They run parallel, and that's where most of the bulk of the uh, jaw compliant resources are. There are some other satellite. Uh, deposits uh, in amongst that number, but mostly it's on that main scan and number two scan. Main scan has this higher grade portion called the McDonald chute, which we're focusing for the underground, and uh, we have a higher grade zone within the main number two scan called the uh, the Radford zone. So uh, yeah, so there's a fair bit of history there, but uh, we've, we've enjoyed, I suppose, the benefits of. But uh, you know, we've, we've pumped in a lot of work and spent something like thirty five million dollars to date. Yeah, definitely. It, it sounds great. So the mining that was happening at Mount around Mount Lindsay before Venture joined, that was more sort of small scale compared to what we typically see in Australia? Yeah, look, a lot of it's just, uh, I suppose, besides the hyster historical mining, which is you, you typically your, you know, your hydraulically mining, you know, with uh, sluicing gravels, all that was sort of early 1900s. But, um, you know, besides Besides Renison, which is still mining today, which is you know reasonably narrow uh, deposit, and it's, it's all massive sulfides, carbonate replacement mostly with and strata bound type mineralization. But the Cleveland mine uh, again was you know a modest size was a, was a modest size mine, Mount Bischoff, uh, I mean, not not large mines, you know, just uh, operating for uh, you know probably less than a decade or around a decade at the most. And and clearly, Renison is the uh, is the absolute standout there. Yeah, and there's a bit more of a relationship between Mount Lindsay and Renison, isn't there? It's something about the geology. Yes, no, that's that's correct. Uh, we have uh, um, we have Renison to the, to the um, south east of us. Mount Lindsay is not a long strike, but uh, our land package extends out to the west, and we do encompass the Federal Basset Fault. The Federal Basalt Fault uh, is one of the main hosts of mineralisation or controls of mineralisation at, at Renison. And, and then, then they have the uh, the Renison Mine Sequence. And that Renison Mine Sequence, uh, in fact, broadens uh, as it 
comes onto our tenure. And in fact, we have an alluvial tin field at the called the Stanley River tin field sitting on top of that uh, same geology. So we just drilled um, our first uh, couple of holes into that. Um, there was a little bit of drilling done previously, which was all drilled in the wrong orientation. But uh, and we managed to delineate uh, five dolomite zones. I think uh, quite often, quite famously, there's three of those at uh, at Renison. But uh, we've already got a small uh, satellite uh, pit there called Reward underneath uh, Gosson. It was mined back again uh, around about the early 1900s, and so we've got a small satellite pit there. But uh, you know, we're pretty excited by the potential of that, and certainly. You know, going forward, we want to be, um, you know, putting a lot more holes following up that first, I suppose that's called a technical success, but uh, we're still waiting for the assays. But, you know, we're probably, we're not going to get all great intersections initially, but uh, we're certainly going to get some pretty, pretty strong indicators that we're close to something, uh, close to maybe a new discovery. That sounds exciting. So was that part of the most recent drilling campaign? Yes, no, that, that's exactly right. We, we, we uh, in fact, it was very much where we started the, a new campaign of drilling, which uh, you know we haven't drilled for you know since 2013, and and uh, the um, you know this is all post an EM survey which we did in 2019. That first time anyone's done airborne EM uh, over at over at that ground position, and um, we come up with 48 EM targets. We prioritised about 12 of them because uh, some of them obviously we haven't even uh, walked over yet, and in some cases we have some. Good surface mapping and, and sampling done, and 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 clearly access is is part of that reason. But you know the, the, the Renison mine sequence is is well located in terms of access. With a you know probably one of the easier access sites around, and we had a, 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 a very strong EM anomaly. And and as you can appreciate, um, being sulphide rich at Renison, uh, you know that being in a sequence with an alluvial tin field and other indicators certainly pointed to being you know, our, our strongest target. And, and uh, you know, we had a great deal of success with our first, first considering you just drill a hole kind of for the first first hole, it's, it's we were very, very happy to see that result. Um, you know, following on from that, we drilled a hole along strike to the number two scarnet at Mount Lindsay itself. And, uh, and what we've seen is that, uh, and there's not much of an EM response at Mount Lindsay, so uh, this was actually... A little bit of a strange thing, but uh, we had some indications, service indications that it was worth testing. And being along strike from a number two scan, we were thought, well, well positioned. We know, you know, we know the geology very well at um, the number two. So we did all that first time. We started getting pyroxene scan, which is proximal to the, or sorry, in a halo, if you like, of the uh, the main mineralized portions of the, of Mount Lindsay, where to get the cassiterite and shellite. So very encouraging results. So, so what we're seeing is that um, you know. We're up against the, the Meredith granite to the northwest of us. The Meredith granite slopes down, and we essentially follow that contact. And there must be a hypothesis which has come up. And we believe that's why we see the mineralization may have popped up in that extension to the number two scar. Not dis too dissimilar to what happens at uh, if you compare Renison to our location. Renison is also similar hypothesis, but mm -hmm. uh, because of the, the Meredith granite actually trends gets deeper and deeper and deeper as, as it falls away off our land block heading towards Renison and then 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 as the deposit comes up and obviously the Renison deposit is pretty much wrapped around that that granite that's that's uh, that come up to a higher level so that's all shown by a, a, a seismic survey that was done probably you know, nearly 10 years ago now it shows that actually it's the same granite source so that's that's pretty important so um you know and and, and our friends uh, down at Renison have um uh, drill drill the hole, uh, accessing it through our Riley lease to go and test some extensions back the other way. So that it was a pretty deep hole, by the way. But uh, um, I've heard no results or anything like that at this stage. But um, you know, there's there's a there's a connection. Let's put it that way. Yeah, and it, it sounds like there's a lot more exploration potential in the area as a whole. I mean, what's Ventures plan for the next? year or so are you planning to look at more of these em targets or do more drilling on the ones you've already done well look uh, for us um you know we would like to continue exploration there's, there's clearly a more holes to be done along the renison mine sequence um you know I, I could easily throw a dozen holes at that alone but you know we've got about 10 or 12 kilometers so you know we do have a fair extent so even that number of holes is still still you know pales in insignificance 
Um, but, um, you know, holes around the, uh, the target along strike to Mount Lindsay. Um, and, you know, like, we've got, like I said, we've got 12 priority targets. That's two of them. There's at least, we'd like to have a look at some of those other priority targets uh, over the, particularly the next first, so maybe the first quarter of, of, of next year where in, we have a sort of a bit of a, bit of a seasonal, uh, uh, I suppose, effect in Tasmania, West Coast of Tasmania, because it's a reasonably short summer because we're fair distance south and it becomes very hard to do those sort of helicopter support programs. So we'll be, we'll be attacking some of those targets like Webb's Creek and Mount Ramsey, um, in addition to some of our priority targets out to the, to the eastern mountains. We've got some what we call eastern scars that we've grouped together and, and uh, they look uh, you know, fairly compelling targets. So we'll, we'll, we'll definitely give, give that a big push, uh, you know, in parallel to our feasibility work. Yeah, I was going to ask about the feasibility work, actually, because I know that began uh, this October. So how's that going so far? We're looking, we're in the very early stages where we're, we're big part of that program and, and you know, we've already completed a, an open pit focused feasibility study, which we announced back in 2012. So we, we can leverage a, a lot of that work. We don't need to do any more infill work. You know, we've got a you know very strong dual compliant resource, over 70% mission indicated. Um, you know, we've got 15 by 20 metre drilling in that, in that higher grade zone. So we're well positioned there. So, you know, besides you know, maybe, maybe a little bit of geotech, most of the drilling is really focused on, on really getting more metallurgical sample. And that, that hole we announced at 93 metres at uh, 0.5% tin equivalent, you know, at 0 0.3 tin, 0.2 tungsten, and the usual uh, magnetite and copper grades we, we get in resource. But, um, you know, we'll be collecting, you know, at least a tonne of sample. And, and, and the reason we're we're doing the sampling is because we had this breakthrough uh, bit of test work towards the you know, post our feasibility study where we were trying to separate shearlite out of our considerite rich tin concentrate. And uh, we did a side of test on a number of methods and, and the uh, electrostatic separation uh, worked beautifully. We all know that tin's conductive and, and fortuitously shearlite isn't. And, uh, and um, you know, we got a 75% tin con out of that. So that's a great separation. So. The concept is to produce a bulk, sorry, a bulk uh, combined gravity concentrate with a shear light and consider it together and then dry it and then separate it using electrostatic separation. So that's the flow sheet we're trying to make confirm at the moment. We've done some scoping level type of work, um, trying to get the capex down to that sort of $50 million figure. We got very close, but then we got distracted with, with building the Riley iron ore mine because the idea was to mine Riley which is only 1.6 million tonnes to generate cash flow um, to, to do this work. But as it turned out, the iron ore prices has recently fallen. So we put that on, back on care and maintenance, but we've got one shipment out. So, but anyway, in the meantime, you know, putting that aside, the idea was to get that capex down and, uh, and you know, it looks from a scoping level work like we can achieve that. So we're now going to firm up the flow sheet with more met work over, uh, over the next few months to get that drilling done build a team, get the test work program together. We'll also look at ore sorting, you know, which our, again, our, our colleagues at Renison have got three timer ore sorters within their circuit. So obviously we need to try it as well. So, uh, you know, get that test work done and in the meantime. So as always, metallurgists want more sample than less. So we'll go out there and give, us, give them at least a tonne of this material to work with. We've sort of had three tonnes of it sitting around before, which we used up in the previous uh, met work in the previous study. So, uh, yeah, that's that's the sort of the main focus over the initial three months, um, you know, before we start moving, get the date, sort of get the sample, get the data done, test work done, get that data and then start, you know, working up and optimising uh, the flow sheet and, and also the mine at the same time. Oh, that sounds great. And with the uh, targets that you've been drilling more recently, are you planning to include them in some sort of updated mineral resource estimate for Mount Lindsay, or will they be separate satellite deposits that you think about bringing online later? Well, look, the Mount Lindsay number does include, you know, reward, you know, which is just I was talking about before, which is on the Renaissance mine sequence at half a million times at 0.9% tin. You know, got nice and open pit. That's included. So the other ones have been included in the past. Um, whether we can add it any more will really depend upon the exploration success. Um, you know, that, that'll govern and, you know, if we start getting, because we're, we're building a plant that can treat tin and tungsten or, or, or just even pure tin, 
then, you know, um, obviously if we started getting, um, you know, just straight tin intersections along the Renison mine sequence, we'd probably focus on that. Whether we can get something into the resource, an additional resource will uh, really depend on the level of success. If it ends up being like a Renison, it'll take a little time to drill, drill out and maybe we would add it. But how it fits in the mine plan, um, you know, it, it would, you know, there obviously be a fair bit of work would need to be done to, to add to the mine plan. But, you know, we could probably see seven or eight years at the moment in an underground mine at Mount Lindsay, including a small open pit of reward. Um, but, uh, you know, we, like every other mine on the west coast of Tasmania, has always delivered, uh, you know, multi decade uh, mine lives. And these things don't happen overnight, but, uh, you know, we, we think we've got the, um, highly prospective land holding, and we're well positioned to to uh, start delivering that through exploration. Sure, sounds great. So we're coming to the end of our session now, Andrew, and I just wanted to ask you a very general question. I mean, what makes Venture stand out amongst the other junior tin miners? Well, look, I think what makes us stand out is is, is our location. Um, we're, we're very fortunate, obviously, uh, being on the west coast of Tasmania, near, being near Renison from a geological perspective. But the other thing is that we've got hydropower, renewable energy going past our doorstep. We are now going underground and uh, to reduce our footprint from the open pit um, by uh, nearly 80%. And the reason around that really was not because we wanted to be ESG compliant, which is kind of where, where we are landing and, and pushing towards. Um, but really it was around trying to get the cost down and make it more affordable to, to build and easier to permit. So I think that puts us in a unique position. And because it's in a, we're, we're doing it in Australia, we've got to go through you know, a rigid permitting system um, and uh, we're, we're in a very supportive community, being in a, in a mining district on the west coast of Tasmania. So I think that's, that's what's quite different and quite unique. And, and that's what we're sort of um, you know, hoping to achieve. And, and, and you know, tell that to investors and uh, and everyone else in the industry that uh, you know this asset uh, is well positioned for the future. Great. Um, yeah, it all sounds really positive at Mount Lindsay, and uh, we're definitely excited to see what comes out of the the project next year, for sure. Um, so thanks for joining me, Andrew. Um, it's been really interesting to chat with you. Uh, for everyone else watching at home, you can find out more about Venture Minerals by visiting uh, their booth here at the event um, or by going to ventureminerals.com.au uh, to find out more. All right. Thanks very much. Bye. Thank you. So that was uh, Andrew Radonjic from Venture Minerals there speaking with me earlier this week. Uh, next up, we're going to hear from Thomas Bunga from First Tin uh, in the next session.